Today's khutbah is about the last ayah of Surah Al-Hajj, the 22nd surah of the Qur'an, and this is the 78th ayah. This is the ending ayah of the surah. Uh, this surah had a huge impact on me when I was first learning the meanings of the Qur'an and trying to understand the Qur'an better many, many years ago. And I've spoken about it on occasion throughout the years, and I felt today, uh, I felt the need to review the lessons of this ayah. And I think inshallah ta'ala you'll benefit from them as well. I want to start off by giving you a strange sort of a lesson. You have to keep that in mind so you can appreciate the lessons of this ayah as, as well as possible in the short time that we have. In the English language, we have something called synonyms, right? So for example, choosing and selecting can be considered the same thing. I selected this and I chose this is pretty much the same meaning, right? Uh, or I'm somebody's happy or somebody's joyous or somebody's angry or somebody's upset. These are words that are close in meaning to each other. And there, even though there may be some differences between them, we, we tend to use them interchangeably. Allah, when He speaks, He sometimes uses the same word or the same meaning, but different words. And specifically, what I want to talk to you about today is the different words Allah uses for choice, for making a choice. And in this case, it is Allah Himself choosing. In this passage, Allah says, for example, that He chooses angels and He chooses human beings, some of them, to become messengers. Not all the angels are messengers. Some of them were chosen, like Jibreel alayhi salam is chosen. And the ones that follow him are chosen. And among human beings, some human beings are chosen by Allah to be messengers. Later on in this passage, the ayah I want to talk to you about today, Allah says again, huwa jtabakum, He chose you. He's talking to the ummah, the Muslims, and He says He chose you. Every one of us is also chosen. But the word Allah used for His prophets is something else. The word for choice Allah used is something else. And the word for choice of the believers, you and me, Allah chose us also, is something else. Now this is the beauty of the Arabic language, that every word, even though in English we translate it pretty much the same way, that each of them has their own flavor, has their own meaning. And so I'm going to give you an example to try to help you understand the difference between these two kinds of choice. The word Allah uses for choosing prophets, messengers, He says, Allahu yastafi min al-malaikati rusulan wa min al-nas. The word is yastafi. And to make it see easy for you, sometimes you make a choice when you owe no one an explanation. It's your personal preference, that's it. If somebody asked you, why did you choose it? It's because I chose it. There's no scientific explanation, there's no rationale, there's nothing. So for example, you go to the grocery store and you pick up a Kit Kat, and your wife says, why didn't you get the Twix? Why not the Snickers? Why not all the other things that will give you diabetes? Why did you pick Kit Kat? And you say, I like Kit Kat. No, give me a rational explanation. Explain to me why you chose. Okay, let me help you understand. Because I like it. That's it. It's your preference. You don't owe an explanation. You understand? The same way when you go and buy a shirt and you pick a color you like, it's your choice. That's entirely up to you. And those kinds of preferences are called istifa. They're purely your own. It comes from the word safwa. And safwa means purity. It means purity. And so when a choice is made purely on one's own, and you cannot be asked, why did you choose this person? Now let me contrast this for you. Maybe you work in the human resources department at some company, and your job is to do the interviews for people that are applying for a job, right? And somebody, you know, five people applied for a job, and you, one of them, you gave the job. You said, this is the person we should hire. And then your boss says, why do you think we should choose this person? You say, because he's wearing a blue shirt, and he had a Kit Kat. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Because when you make that choice, then it has to be based on qualifications. Does he have the right experience? Does this person have the right education? Are they a good fit for our team? Did they, how, did they do well on the interview? There are other questions that led to that choice. That's not just personal preference, you understand? When Allah says He chose messengers, He says, Allahu yastafi. Allah made that choice, you don't get to ask questions, why? You don't get to say, why did Allah choose Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Why not someone else? The Quraysh asked, how come this Qur'an didn't come to one of the two, you know, a man from one of the two great cities, a, a great man, in other words, Taif and Makkah are the big cities of the Arabian region the, of, of that time, and they have plenty of millionaires, plenty of politicians, plenty of famous people, and people listen to them already. And Rasulullah was actually raised pretty much an orphan, not very well known, He's not a celebrity, he doesn't have political power, he doesn't have economic power, he doesn't have any of these things. Why should, he, why should Allah choose him? He should have chosen someone who's got more chances of being heard, 
That's the rationale they offered. And really in response to all those kinds of questions, by the way, the Israelites asked, how come he wasn't one of us? How come God chose one of the Gentiles, one of the Arabs? That can't be a prophet. We're supposed to be the, the nation that Allah chooses messengers from. You know, we're the, we're the chosen people. Different nations had different criticisms of why, why is he the right choice? Some even say, well, why, why Arabia? Why couldn't we have a Greek prophet or a German prophet or whatever other prophet? Why, why do you have to have an Arab prophet? Allah's response to that is he does istifaq, which means he owes no one an explanation. He chooses. And that's, it's not your place to ask. It's not my place to ask. And he shuts all of those questions down by saying, Allahu yastafi min al malaikati rusulan wa min al nas. But when it comes to us, he used a different word. He said, huwajdabakum. And I won't explain that to you yet. I'm going to start, because that's not happening in the beginning of this ayah that I want to share with you. It's happening a little bit further down. Allah begins by saying, wajahidu fillahi haqqa jihadihi. Struggle. Jihad means struggle. Struggle with no goal before you except Allah. Be clear that every struggle you're making, Allah is in your vision. And do that in the way that Allah deserves. I'm being very rough and easy with the translation for the purposes of khutbah. Struggle for the sake of Allah the way He deserves it. Try to do things for Allah the way He deserves it. Now, the issue is that that's practically impossible. None of us prays to Allah the way He deserves it. None of us thanks Allah the way He deserves it. None of us obeys Allah the way He deserves it. None of us remembers Allah the way He deserves it. That's impossible. No matter how much you do, you and I can never actually fulfill how much Allah actually deserves. وَأَصْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا Allah says He unleashed His favors on you, the ones you can see and the ones you can't even see. The ones that are obvious and the ones that are hidden away. How can I even thank Allah for things I can't even acknowledge? I don't even know they're hidden from me and they're being done to me. Favors that are happening inside of my body right now, that are happening from Allah, I'm not even aware of them. And yet, Allah knows that He's doing them, I can't. One of the most fa favored slave of, uh, slaves of Allah, one of the most grateful human beings of Allah, Allah describes Ibrahim alayhi salam saying, Shakiran li an'umihi. He was grateful to Allah's favors. But the word an'um is, for those of you who know a little bit of sarf, it's considered jam'u qilla, which means he was grateful for only a few favors of Allah. It doesn't mean many favors, it means a few favors. Now that sounds inappropriate. Ibrahim salam was grateful for a few favors of Allah. Well, no, actually compared to the number of favors Allah has done, a human being, even if they spent their entire life being grateful like Ibrahim salam, that would only amount to a few favors that you were actually able to be grateful for. And there's so many unlimited more that you and I cannot even count, much less be grateful for. So Allah says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you try to count or encircle, completely grasp the favor of Allah, you can't. And in that remarkable ayah, he didn't even say the favors of Allah. If you were to, you and I can't even fully appreciate one favor of Allah. نِعْمَةَ Allah. That's ismu jins here, it's mufrad also. One single favor of Allah I can't fully appreciate. One favor of Allah is my ability to see. One single favor of Allah. In how many ways is that one single favor of Allah helping me? I can't even count. How many ways has it saved my life? How many ways is it providing for me? How many ways is it giving me joy? How many ways is it preventing harm from, from me? It's, the, it's countless. Per second, it's countless. So even one favor we can't. Now I come back to the point. Allah says, I want you to struggle for me the way I deserve it. And I'd like to give you a comparison again to help, help we visualize this problem. You go for a job interview and you don't know any programming. You're not a programmer, you have no technical background, your resume under technology says Google and Microsoft Word and that's pretty much it. You know nothing else. And you go for this job interview and the interview says, yeah, well, for this job you need the following coding languages and at least 10 years experience in this language, this language, and he starts listing languages. And you're just listening there, sitting, and you have to have management experience, and you've had to have developed mobile apps for at least five years, and you have to have a portfolio of at least 20 projects, and he's going on and on and on, and you're sitting there, it's a 30 minutes this guy's going on, and you're sitting there going, can he just stop so I can say sorry, this is not me, and I can leave and save myself the embarrassment? Because he's looking at your resume that has none of those qualifications, and he's telling you how impossible this job is for you. I mean, how am I qualified for that? 
And at the end of that interview, he looks at you and says, congratulations, you start tomorrow. Well, if he said that, you'd be sitting there, no, I, I, that's not me, I can't do that job, I'm not qualified for this. Why are you choosing me? Allah says to you and me, you will struggle for me the way I deserve. My immediate response is, I'm not qualified. How am I qualified? This is way up here. And I'm way down here. I think you might have me, so somebody else might be a better fit for this job. And Allah then says, huwa ajtabakum. Now He says, He, in fact, He alone has chosen you. He's the one that's chosen you. First He gives the impossible job description. Then He says, you're the right fit for the job. And the word he used, ijtiba, is different from, remember for istifa, I said it's a choice, Allah owes no explanation. There's no explanation. Like he chooses prophets, messengers. You don't ask him why. But when you say ijtiba, it comes from the word jabu. And jabu actually was used when you collect taxes back in the day. And taxes were collected from those who were qualified, they made enough kind of money. If somebody's homeless, you can't collect taxes from them. They have to have a minimum kind of income, so they qualify and then you make that choice. Now let me put that in simple words for you. Some of you work, for example, you're fixing your car. Or you're, fixing some, you're putting furniture together. And there's a screw, and you have to tighten that screw. You have to pick the right kind of tool for this kind of job, you understand? You can't pick a hammer for this. You need a screwdriver and the right kind of screwdriver, you understand? When you pick the right tool for the right job, that's called ijtiba. When something fits the job, and you make that choice, that's called ijtiba. What I'm trying to get at is, Allah sees in you, and He sees in me, something that He decided, of all the other billions of people in the world, you should get to say, La ilaha illallah. You should get to say, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He sees something in you, that qualifies you to struggle for Him. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ هُوَ He selected you. And it's a wise, it's the right fit for the job.